Feel free to drink. Too, yeah. Okay, cool. Called bourbon and breaking. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I mean, that's the next side. And we are live, Corey. We're live. Uh -oh. What, what uh -oh. is that? Oh, sorry. I'm cutting Corey off. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, how are you? Jeff with Pack Geek here. I'm here with my buddy Corey Hollinsworth. Um, he is he's a very special guest during Greek Freak Week because yeah. he was on the brand team of all of the products that we've been opening this week. Yes. Definitely. What, 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 like, and you said Court Kings yeah. was your, was your, that was your baby. It was, it was. Okay. So yeah, the, the quick little intro story as we're going to, you know, jumping in. So I, I remember I was sitting, I, I just left work and I get a call from Keith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just got a call from Keith Howard, who is, you know, the basketball guru at the right, right? right? I mean, you know, he, he's he, a legend. Formerly a Beckett. Yeah. He's just, you know, he knows everything basketball. And I get a call from him. And I'm literally at like a grocery store. And I get, he's like, Corey, I just want to call and tell you, you've been doing a great job. We really want you to take this next step. Okay. How long had you been at Penny? I'm sorry. I've been there for maybe six to nine months. Okay. Uh, you oh. know, it oh, was, so you it was were, pretty early. You were brand new. I was a baby. Okay. Yeah, a little baby. Um, but he's like, Corey Keens, that's going to be your baby. He's like, I want you to take that and make it great. Oh my gosh, that's and a lot it, of pressure. It was like a Tuesday night at seven o'clock, right? And I'm like, <laughs> okay, that's, that's, we'll, we'll see what we can do. So I literally jumped at home, grabbed my laptop and started like, you know, crunching numbers, making sure things are working. We come in and we start talking about it. I was like, okay, Court Kings started in 910. Let's redo it. Let's do some other different things. And oh awesome. my gosh. So you were like, not only am I going to oversee this, but I'm going to put my stamp on it. I'm going to exactly. make it my own. Exactly. And so, you know, um, you know, from there, we kind of started to pitch some ideas and like have our brainstorm session and go through like just all the, you know, things that we do to make these products hit the shelves. And um, yeah, Core Kings became one of my absolute favorite brands. Oh my gosh. So um, you're on the brand team now. What does, what does that mean? So the Panini brand team. So, uh, you know, I spent seven and a half years there and it was an incredible time. Uh, the brand team really is the incubator. You know? okay, it's, it's, okay. the, it's the group that sits and says, okay, you know what? Um, we've got this product coming out. We've got a slot in the calendar. What should we do with it? Okay, should it be Court King? Should it be Prestige? Should it be something different? You know, um, and sometimes we just start with a name. Okay. You know, like at that time of the year, actually back in 13, 14, uh, we were trying a few different brands, like Crusade. That was its sure. first year as a standalone product. Um, Elite had had some ups and downs. Court Kings had, you know, hit once before. And, and so we start, the brand team really sits, comes up with the idea, says, okay, what if we could do this? What if we put this product here? That and sounds then, like the best job ever. I mean, it's great, you know? Like, you know, you get to sit around in a room and you're like, hey, okay, you know what? We could do this. Or we could try this. You brainstorm sports cards. We do. Essentially. That's what we did. Yeah. Well, do you? So you go through and do you decide on which players you're going to feature? Mm -hmm. Or okay. Yeah. So I mean, you know, it's it generally depending on the product. It's a you know six month to a nine month to. We had some products that were more than a year from when we started all the way till it gets shown. No so, kidding. Yeah. So I mean, just depending on you know whether or not there's on card autographs, the timing of things, it's all kinds of different um, things that go into that. And uh, w one of the funny things is, it's like, you know, even thinking about like rookie photo, rookie photo shoots or yeah, rookie premieres, yeah. you have to like go through all kinds of different uh, things to think about that. So, um, so yeah, you know, we do everything from the naming conventions to the budgeting to, you know, to uh, players lists and, you know, who we're getting autograph deals with, oh all gosh. kinds of different things. Um, it, it's a really, really inclusive, or, you know, there's no like one set of things that right. happen. It's super it, broad. Um, Oh, I love that. I always get jealous when uh, our buddy Tracy Hackler oh, posts a picture from like a rookie photo shoot. I'm like, yep. I'm so jealous. You're in a headlock. Like he's getting a headlock by Drew Locke. You I, know, like, I mean, that just makes too much sense. <laughs> right. uh, you know, it, yeah. And of course, you know, there's times where we get to go and interact with the players yeah, and yeah. have them sign these autographs and take photographs, everything else like that. And Court Kings has uh, the fresh paint autographs. It's my one of my favorite subsets. Yeah, right there. that was one of the most ambitious ones that honestly we had put into this product. Really? Because at the time, uh, originally Court Kings, I think, didn't have either didn't have on card autographs or didn't have many on card. Okay. Okay. It definitely didn't have rookie on card autographs. 
And that was one of the things that we talked about when we rebooted it was, hey, let's do this product or let's do this insert called Fresh Paint. It would be the rookie autograph. Yeah. And we can get it at the rookie premiere. Oh. Or rookie photo shoot, excuse me. That's for, that's from working on football. So, yeah, okay. So, <laughs> how, do you, how do you decide which cards you are going to get autographed at the rookie photo shoot versus which one you're going to ship a box off to the player and they're going to autograph them? Yeah, yeah. It, it really boils down to timing. You okay, know, okay. Um, you know there, there's a, a really, you know, unique way the calendar shapes out right. um, or shakes out. And we start to try and take a look at brands and whether or not they can even be feasibly uh, produced in a certain time. Gotcha. gotcha. So, you know, we, we say Court Kings, you know, if it, um, I think now it releases in quarter one or quarter two. It's one of the later. It's, it's later now. Yeah. yeah. Originally, I mean, when 13, 14 came out, it was one of the last ones in quarter four. You know, oh, okay. So, gotcha. Gotcha. You know, because the way that the basketball calendar works out at the time, you know, hoops is always the first product. Mm -hmm. um, and at the time, I want to say that was in early October. Okay. And so this was, I believe, a November release. Mm. And so we had to get this thing ready uh, for the rookie premiere, which was in August. Wow. And so sometimes that means that our timelines shrink tremendously because the draft happens on a you know, normal year. Uh, the last week of June. So those cards have to be ready to go, printed, shipped, everything to the rookie photo shoot by August, you know, 10th or whatever that is. So sometimes that, that, you know, big schedule turns into a six week time crunch. Yeah, these are things that collectors out there, we, we never have to worry about. We don't think about, we're just like, Panini, where's the oh, set? I, like, come on. Like it's, I, I will tell you though, it's so rewarding that the fresh paint are on card autographs because it's such beautiful presentation oh, I it, yeah. that I feel like the sticker auto would take away from that because it is beautiful. And that was something we discussed, you know, we, uh, and, and there are obviously brands that use the canvas technology sure. and, uh, and we can make it so that the autograph looks good with the sticker autograph. Mm -hmm. um, but the first time we saw the non 10 autograph or, or 10, 11, whichever year it was, we look, um, and the canvas just lends itself to such a really, really great autograph. Oh yeah, you got a little texture there. It's yeah, yeah, it, it's something that is really, really good, and uh, you know, we wanted to lean in on that. You know, with this especially, I was like, all right, fresh paint, air apparent, you know, really cool, different things, leaning into art and kind of that airship king, yeah, uh, ideology. Well, so what, what, what was your most memorable product that you worked on? So Could be in a year. Yeah, uh, you know, it, it has to go to eminence. Really? Um, so, okay. uh, I mean, there's, there's a lot. I mean, over the years, I think it's over 100 brands that I was able to be a part of and bring to market. But, like, eminence soccer. So this is in 2018, right? And, and actually in 2017, um, Nick pulled Did me. you work in soccer, too? Yes, I did. So I, did? Okay. I, I touched three sports. I touched uh, NBA, NFL, and soccer. Wow. And uh, overlapping on some of those. But, uh, um, soccer is just funny because we had built some great products in soccer. Some had done well. Some, you know, were, were, took a little bit of time. And then um, I switched over to football. And uh, the head of product development calls me and says, okay, Corey, we're going to do eminent soccer. And it, and it needs to be ready next week. <laughs> Get out Basically. Of here. I mean, it was a super short time frame. Uh, and I was like, okay. And I had worked on the eminence basketball in 14, 15, which was ambitious as it was. And Can so, I ask, like, yeah. why, why, would, why would they not want to give themselves more, more lead time than that? Well, we actually tried to give ourselves as much as we could. Right. And we realized we needed as much time as we could get. Okay. okay. And that's okay. why it needed, and it's a brand new product. And that's why it needed to get done so quickly. Because okay, got it, got with it. soccer, especially, um, you're not you're not just dealing with one nation with 30 teams. You're dealing with the about world. 40 nations, <laughs> yeah. and you know, team after team after team. Uh, Eminent soccer ended up having, if I remember right, 27 or 28 people who had never signed autographs before, never signed uh, trading cards before. No kidding. Um, it was, I think, 70 signers and, yeah, like 28, 29 new oh people. Oh, my gosh. Across, <laughs> across, I think it was eight or nine countries. Oh, that sounds uh, like a nightmare. And four continents? I think it was four continents. It was just, you know, we were, I was just giving, you know, hell basically to my, uh, to my co-partner, or my partner in the acquisitions team every day. 
all right, where is Ian Rush? Where is this person? Where is that person? Um, but it was a, probably about a 13 month process overall, oh uh, maybe a little bit gosh. more. Uh, and it was one of those things where when we saw it finally hit shelves, it, it actually launched at the national. And, Good time to launch. And this was the 2018 national. And we're standing there at the Panini booth. And Cyrus, who's a great friend of mine, he's a breaker, big in soccer. He's at the first box that's that's going live Whoa. to everybody, to Whoa. the world. And we all are sitting there. Like, I wish that you could see his, like, you know, and his it's vantage being projected point. on, like, one of the big screens? Yeah, so oh. I wish you could see his vantage point because all of a sudden, you know, he's sitting here with this big box of eminent soccer, and there's five or seven people from Panini. Oh, God. <laughs> Plus oh, everybody else. Oh, my like, gosh. Okay, oh, my gosh. Is this going to work? Is this going? And, and then his reaction said, you know, it was just really, really great. And Eminence ended up being this is a great brand in soccer. It was a labor of love. It just you know, but man, let me tell you, that was Dude, something. So, else. what do you think about? Because soccer is going crazy. It's like, what do, you, what do you think about all this? Because you were in on the ground floor it. of soccer cards. I mean, I love it. Well, because, the modern soccer cards, I should say. Yes. they've been around for a while. Yeah. So you know, I uh, pretty much anything from uh, 2016 onward was um, you know I was in on pretty much everything with that. No kidding. Uh, with soccer and. Uh, you know, we had had a couple, we had great success with the World Cup Prism in 14 with Donruss and Select. And then um, jumping on from there, you know, we tried to push boundaries. We tried to do some great things that, you know, our competitors weren't doing mm -hmm. on card autographs, uh, new signers, not just saying, okay, not just being content with like who we could get, but like saying, hey, let's go out and try and get this player. Right. He's starting to be an, uh, someone who people are talking about. Yeah, I remember uh, Paulo Dybala. He's a, a great player for Juventus and Argentina. He was shout out. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you know, um, he was somebody who we basically talked talk to our team. We're like, hey, we need to get him. He's young. He's like the heir apparent going on down. Uh, you know, in in the future, he's going to be great. Yeah. Finally found him. Got him. He's great, how did you learn about this guy? Are you an avid soccer? You know what's yeah. funny? When I started with with Panini Soccer on the soccer side of things, I could probably name. Less than ten soccer players. Okay. Most of them went to UC Santa Barbara. My, you know, <laughs> more, chats. more chats. But um, you know, I, but but for the most part, I knew Messi. I knew Ronaldo. Of I knew course, Neymar. Of I knew the big, you know, kind of players who were there. Mm -hmm. um, but then within a, a couple of months, I felt like it was pretty solid. And, um, you know, it, it started to become a thing, like even with like certain players were like, oh my gosh, we have to do everything we can to try and get this player. Um, we'd love to get some of them, but no, we just couldn't, you know? And, uh, but yeah, so I, soccer became something that like, I just, I put in, we put in a lot of work into it where, you know, soccer didn't have a luxury that basketball, football, or baseball does in that they've got 60 plus years of collecting uh, history. Yeah. Uh, you know, because I mean, we have, and, and there's traditional rookies, you know what I mean? The, the leagues herald, okay, this is a player's first year. Mm -hmm. Soccer doesn't have that because That's a lot true. of these players have been playing professionally since they were 15. They have their rookie card, but they could have been in the league for 10 years. Right. And, yeah. and, and, and we struggle with that. You know, we, we struggle with different ways to, um, to identify what does that look like? Is it the first time that they're in one of the major five leagues in Europe? Right. Is it the first time they have a cap with their national team? How do you identify a rookie? I think we did a good job, um, you know, and I think that they'll, they'll, that Panini will build on that going forward. Um, but it was not without, you know, some some errors, some, you know, <laughs> some ways of like, to, to your point, like, oh, why is this person having, why does this person have a rookie? Like uh, last year for Premier League Prison, we had, three teams who hadn't been in the Premier League in years. Mm. And so Norwich City didn't have rookie cards. Um, who was the other one? Uh, Sheffield United, no rookie cards. And no so kidding. like, there's somebody like Billy Sharp is a player for um, Sheffield, I think. And he had been in the league for 10 years, eight years, but never had a, had a card. Therefore, that's his rookie card. Wow. Per industry standards, that's a rookie card. I and mean, you think about it, like Michael Jordan's first year was 84, right? A yeah, 84. But what's his rookie card? Well, they consider it 86, but there are those star cards. So it's a little bit different, but, right. but I agree that the yeah. more industry standard definition of his rookie is or even 86. Think, or even thinking about like, you know, uh, Bill Russell and Jerry West yes. and those ones now, from the 60s yeah. and 70s yep. where, you know, they had been playing professionally before Tops or Fleer had made any cards. For sure. So, yeah. yeah. Wow. So are you a collector? 
I I'm am. curious. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Are. Okay. So, I mean, you know, every one of us, I think, who has, has been through Panini has some collecting heritage within them. Okay. Um, for me, I grew up collecting, you know, it was baseball and football, and it was basically just the, uh, what I could get at, you know, at my local card shop. Sure. sure. Um, and at the time, growing up in California, I was a Barry Bonds guy. I was a Ken Griffey Jr. guy. And so I, you know, that's why I was trying to collect base cards and just all that. Yeah. Uh, plus, I was like, you know, seven, eight, nine years old. Of so course, yeah. What are you, you going to do? <laughs> but, uh, you know, I started to shift and so I kept some of those seals. Oh. Um, did you have any LeBron rookies? Or do you not have any? Not many. Not okay. many. No. And I never really did get any of the good ones. Gotcha. I mean, I had. Uh, I mean, they're all good now. They're all good now. That's true. <laughs> Um, but I know you mean when yes. you say that. Like, I think the only one that I still have left is like Tops Bazooka, right? Okay, you know gotcha. what I mean? So it's like, it's a great, sure. it's a fun brand. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not going to let me retire. But, yeah, um, <laughs> not quite yet. But you know, although the way they're, the way they're appreciating. That's true. Enough. That is very true. But for me, like I, I was, I leaned into uh, brands and then I also went into player collecting. Okay. And I looked at everything. I was like, man, I have got my guy in this 03, 04 draft. I had two, actually I had two. Um, and I was like, okay, look, Boston, very collectible team, right? Yeah. Big market. Yeah. Point guard. This kid looks like, man, he looks like he's going to be Steve Francis. He looks awesome. His name is Marcus Banks. <laughs> He was the 13th pick, I believe, uh, 13th or 16th. <laughs> so much potential. Uh, he was drafted by Memphis, traded to Boston for Kendrick Perkins. Um, <laughs> and I had his ultimate. I had his SB Authentic. I had just about every one of his autographs, pretty much. Didn't have his exquisite. Oh, you had all the autographs. I had autos. Oh, I had them. I had everything. Uh, he was out of the league in four years. <laughs> we all have those. I know. We I all know. have those. I mean, even so, even yeah. the collecting public, they have those players that everybody's all high on, and then it's like the group mentality. They're like, "Oh, everyone's collecting Brian Taylor. Right. I need to get those cards." I mean, and then we all have a giant stash of Brian Taylor. Yeah, I mean, I mean, just even think about this. It's like you know, Giannis four years ago. You know, people were like, oh, "Okay, maybe I might, I yeah. might get, yeah. I might get his card. We'll, we'll see." But uh, you know, it's one of those things where. You know, I, I definitely was like, man, I love this player. I think he's going to be really, really great. No. And, and so these days, you know, I, you know, working brand to brand, everything else, it's like I still collect, you know, I'm a Packers fan, so I put the Packers. Okay. Um, you do have collect, uh, eclectic yeah. uh, team. I do. Taste. I do. I like that. I grew, up, I grew up in the middle of California. And, and so it's like I, all my local teams were, were three to four hours away. Yeah. So I didn't have anything that wasn't, it wasn't a, a home team to root for. Gotcha. Um, so, I, yeah, if you look back at like probably 1993, 94, it's like whoever was winning time you know let's just be honest but I understand. Uh, but i've kept with them you know um and, and so uh yeah packers and then i really actually want to build a um kind of a collection of like the 90s mariners i love that you know that's like, great because because they were such a fun team i mean griffey buhner a rod uh edgar, know, Martinez. Johnson, edgar tino even tino <laughs> oh, uh, Martinez, Tino was there. Yeah, you're right. I mean, you know, he was a stud. He was on the USA team. He that was. was. Oh, he's that was great. Cool. He's great. Uh, By the way, I, I need, I'm yeah. sorry. I need to explain my yeah. Uh, what's going on here? So this is odd. I am a I am a Mavericks fan. They're playing right now. If anyone wants to give us a score check, I would love to know what the score is. Um, <laughs> but so I've I've worn this two of the uh, or three of the five nights of Greek Freak Week. Now every night I've worn this, I've pulled a Giannis. So and dude, last Got night. It. We opened Pinnacle. I yeah, pulled. Two, right? I, I pulled an artist proof and I pulled oh, the regular base. That's what it was. So that was pretty awesome. Okay. Yeah, because you're I, like, how in the world did you pull two bases? I mean, it, it, it's rare. It, it yeah. happens. Yeah, yeah. But it's not, you know, not what you want to see every day. Right. Right. Um, <laughs> but I, if if you pull two Giannis's out of twelve cards or oh ten cards, then you know we'll have to go and, and find the person who built. D don't even don't oh, even funny. put that out there because um, I am. Uh, yeah, everybody's accusing me. They're like, well, you open the open the box of guy that. <laughs> yeah, you know, on the brand team. So obviously they just planted that. But no, I bought this off of eBay. I did not bring this. This is his own. Yeah. So if there is a Giannis in here, I got it fair and square. Yes. Happy birthday, Nick Kerr. Happy oh, yeah. 19th birthday. Wait, wait, we got birthday now? Yeah. Right oh, hey. Hey, nice. Hey, happy birthday, Nick. If you're in Canada, right. yeah. hopefully you can celebrate out tonight. If you're in the U.S., then you know. 
Cheers. Yeah, got a couple of years. Cheers. Oh, um, yeah, cheers, dude. Cheers. Thank you for coming over. By Absolutely. the way, Corey Hollinsworth from the brand team Panini, who did all of these boxes that we've been opening this week. So I'm so excited to have you here. Yeah. Um, oh, real quick before I forget, I have to announce uh, a winner of our yeah, Giannis right. jersey. Hold on, real quick. I'm going to digress for a couple minutes here. So we're giving away this jersey. It is the Greek Freak jersey. So it sick. is autographed. What? It's got the alphabet and the autograph right about here. And it's JSA certified. What do you think, Corey? You're seeing it. I mean, in person. It's a lot of letters. It is a um, lot. <laughs> so many letters. You definitely want to scrabble if you had his last name. <laughs> um, so I have the winner. That's um, it's incredible. From, it, we had a Twitter contest. So uh, nice. I have the winner here and I, I told everybody I would give it away. I didn't win. Right? The show. You did not. Win. Okay. But okay. Uh, thank you for your retweet. Hey, you know what? I, <laughs> anything so, to do. Anything to, anything to help. So the winner of the Giannis jersey is his uh, handle is our trading card. So it's at our trading cards, sports card antagonist, card economist, Ben. Wow. You are the winner of the Giannis jersey. I've actually seen Ben around Twitter for years now. So uh, he, he's been in several of the contests. I don't think he's ever won anything that we've done, but congratulations, man. I hope you are a size XL or smaller than that. Um, so you can wear the jersey or you can frame it. Frame yeah, that. so shout out Ben. Um, I just want to do that. So, but I have more questions for you. Uh, okay, oh, so okay. so you are a collector. I would think yes. it would be somewhat dangerous to be a collector around all these amazing products. But then I then I started thinking, well, is it is it like working at working at Pizza Hut where on your lunch break you don't want Pizza Hut pizza because you're around it all day long, or were you still like, I am so excited to get my hands on a box of Prism? Well, the good news is I'm a Domino's guy. <laughs> um, so uh you know pizza hut yeah we're, we're, we're okay with that so it's a it's a it's a bit of both you have to have okay. a balance okay. because okay. i mean ultimately you know I, I would say that everybody who works at panini uh, on the brand side of things wants to build products that they want to buy that makes sense you know what i mean like because ultimately we're collectors we're people who bought a box of cars we've been ecstatic about what we've got right and then we've also been completely pissed off by what we bought you know what i mean like yeah, it, yeah, it's that it's that you know give and take and we um we take a look at that every day where you know and where you, you sit in the brainstorm sessions and you're like okay we know that this box is you know the srp is a hundred dollars okay so our collector is going to be happy if this is what they get for that Sure. Um, you know, are they going to compare that to something else? You know, so we, we take a look at it. It's like, are we going to be happy if we go to our local card shop and buy that? And, and, and so for as a collector, you know, ultimately we want to build products that help build the community. We want to build products that like that, that make collectors happy. It keeps you employed, but as a collector, it also gets you excited. Exactly. That exactly. makes sense. And, and you know, um, you definitely see cards a lot more than you do if you don't look at it right. you know, uh, in that world. Well, so what, what happens if you, do they have a place for you guys to buy cards or do you mm. have to go to like mom no. and pop shop down the street no, and buy you, the product? You, you know, what's work? funny is, you know, so we're, we're Dallas based, right? And so when I was with Panini, it would be regular that we would go to local card shops. Okay. And support them. Uh, uh, you know what I mean? That's we, cool. We'd go to the one in Grapevine, the one in Plano, S&P, yeah. S&P. we'd go to Nick's, Nick's Car Shop, yeah. uh, one in Arlington, I can't remember the name of yeah, it. Yeah, Playball. Playball, thank yeah, you. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and when I would travel, I'd go back home to California, I'd go to H&H back in Bakersfield. Have um, you been to Burbank Sports Cards? I've not. I've worked with them a little bit, but I've never been to Burbank. They, they're awesome. Sometimes. And then the, uh, what is it? Is it the dugout? No, it's not. Yeah, OC, dugout. OC dugout. Right? Is it? Okay, yeah. okay, okay. There, there's one in LA. I'm, I'm forgetting what it's called. Yeah, OC it's dugout, I believe, like, is the one in Anaheim. Really? Um, okay. Either Anaheim or Tustin, I can't remember. Okay. That's where I, I used to live down there too. And I would last time I was there years ago. I was like, oh, I'm looking gonna go swing by. Um, but yeah, it, it's something where it, it becomes almost like a. It, it's part of a family in a way. It's part of a community, right? Because you want ultimately everybody to to be successful. Yeah. You want you don't want to you know like you want the end end consumer to buy this product or buy into a break and feel like they got something good for sure. And so you know ultimately. Ultimately, like we would go, and, and so yeah, we didn't necessarily have it. We didn't have a hobby shop at Panini headquarters. Right. It was <laughs> like uh, a commissary. Where no, you like there were days where we'd be like, "Hey, it's uh, it's release day for this product. We got to go." 
Okay, so I, I know I know what I have an idea of which ones you worked on, yeah. but what did you what did you collect as a collector? Was there certain brands that you're like, oh man, I'm gonna get? Yeah, so I remember one. when um, actually when Twelve Thirteen Prism launched. Okay, uh, I went. I, we all would go to Target. We would all go to Walmart. No kidding. And grab packs, and you know, we yeah, would go and, and um, I have the you know the Twelve Thirteen base set. One through, really? uh, one through three. And the gold Kawhi, right? Uh, 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 Did you see what that just sold for? Um, hold on, let me take a drink of this. Really. Over a hundred grand or something crazy? Yeah, it was. I didn't have that. Um, I, I wish I had that or a silver <laughs> or anything from that <laughs> yeah, year. But sure. The only thing I remember, you know, I had a, a green Bradley Beal. Um, and, and you know. Um, I love Bradley Beal. He's, he's one of my he's favorite underrated. players. He's actually one of my favorite players that we worked with at all. No uh, kidding. He's a, he, a good guy. Nice guy. Like he was actually one of the first athletes I worked with at Panini. So no we, we had a, a signing session with him here in Dallas when they were traveling and met up with him. And he was literally one of the first people who I worked with at Panini. Wow. I'd worked with athletes in the past, but this was the first time we've been signing and everything. Yeah. And we were signing totally certified. And we were sitting there. Is this together, like his rookie season? His rookie season. Okay, got it. So he had just been in the league for a month, basically. <laughs> awesome. Um, Awesome, awesome dude, super nice. And, you know, we, we love players like that. You know? Yeah, of course. The ones who obviously sign well for Panini, so there's no redemptions or rewards points or anything else like that. But, you know, you, you want players who um, just, you have great interactions with. And so that's where, when I was at Panini, I would collect players who I kind of sat with and worked with. Oh, that makes sense. So, on, like the, so on the NFL side of things, like Nike and Hines, he and I spent the entirety, basically, of the rookie premiere together. No kidding. Yeah, so like he sat down. He came in and sat down at, at, at the Panini room. And he just sat there and just started talking and just signing autographs and, sign, and talking and talking and talking. Um, and it's just like, I know where my Kobe auto is. That's a good question. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, there's, uh, there's just so many um, – just, you know, stories like that where we had great players who um, who were awesome to work with. And so, like, you know, Naheem Hines would be the one who I would root for. And I would yeah, that, no, that makes perfect sense. Uh, yeah. Do you have any fun stories about players that you, you worked with that, I mean, just the, that you were able to tell? Just the banter of, like, being able to, you know, just sit and see the camaraderie with everybody. Oh, yeah. And uh, just see, like, you know, how much fun they're having with each other. Because a lot of these guys have known each other for years. Um, just like, actually, one of my favorite stories is, this was, I want to say, either the 2014 or 2015 rookie, from, uh, rookie photo shoot for the NBA. Uh, we had a, a um, one of our team members at Panini, you know, we're, we're hanging out after we're shooting baskets and everything. And um, he's trying to block uh, one of the players because this is after the shoot everybody's kind of just like hanging out having fun and he's trying to guard the players <laughs> like legit guard him? legit oh, no. I mean and, and, and the guy who opinion, he's great he's actually a really good yeah, basketball yeah, player yeah he's great for like a, a regular dude yes yeah and <laughs> let me tell you it did not end well for him he wouldn't blow out an ankle or anything like that. didn't blow out an ankle but he did get dunked on <laughs> he did get dunked on and, and it, this was not you know like a top pick or anything it was so, you know, second rounder. But oh my let me tell gosh, you. that's hilarious! And then he tried to he tried to like you know size him up and, and shoot. He got blocked to, to you know it, to it, Kingdom Come. It's all fun and games until you square off with somebody who's in the NBA. Like it, it's okay if like I see you hanging out at the at the, the Panini yeah. thing, and I'm like, hey, Corey, let's go play one on one. Like we're we're both regular Joes, but yeah. if I you know go and challenge like Bradley Beal. It's going to be awful. It's not even going to be yeah. fun. And then, like, even two years ago, like, we were at the NFL premiere, and we're tossing balls back and forth with players, you know, footballs back and forth, and I tried to throw something to Saquon Barkley, and he was just outside of my range, basically. <laughs> and I just ended up, like, just completely shanking past him. <laughs> and I'm like, that's just it. Like, <laughs> so they're actually, yeah, like, yeah. throwing the football around with the community folks and having fun like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's so cool. Uh, it is. It's good. It's a good environment overall. So we have, we have a lot of great opportunities like that. You know? So who, who should the people watching collect just because they're super cool and, and fun to be around? I mean, love Naheem Hines, like I said. Okay, uh, yeah. you know, but we're watching it. We're here for, for basketball. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. So, we are. Um, you know, I spent a lot of time with Zach Levine uh, mm. that rookie year. He's a great kid. Very great cool. guy. Um, you know, John Wall ended up, you know, he, he would he, – 
we came back, he came back to us a few years, you know, after his rookie season. It's like, man, you know what? Like, you're really great. Like, you know, he, he came back, he wanted to sign, and he became a great partner with Penny. Um, he was an awesome player. Uh, I sat with Jabari, I mean, Jabari, you know, has, you know, kind of had his ups and downs, yeah. Jabari Parker, but um, those are some of the, you know, my favorite ones on the basketball side. Um, I, actually, I love working with Markel Fultz. No kidding. I mean, he's just a, he's a stud, too. I mean, hey, he's doing great now in, in um, in Orlando, yeah. I really hope the best for him. He was just fun to be around. So, do you, you think know, he's got a chance against the Greek Freak? I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> no, no, offense. but I am. I am a hundred percent rooting for him. Yeah, really. Okay, cool. Yeah, hundred cool. percent. Well, so okay, so, yeah. so I uh, we're obviously opening up thirteen, fourteen court games. Yep. What? See, I, I've got the rundown of this box, but yes. I would much rather you talk about this box. All right, so court kings. One autograph, one memorabilia. Uh, I believe so. At the time, it was thirteen, fourteen. So, so this should also have at least one rookie, um, potentially one parallel. I want to say maybe, and, and okay. a few inserts. Okay. Um, yeah. So this was the the reboot of Court Kings, and uh, there should there's also one box topper that could or could not be autographed, depending. So, can you talk to us about how this brand? And I know it did actually started prior to you being at Panini, but yes. talk to us about the evolution from Diamond Kings into Court Kings basketball. Yeah, so Diamond Kings had been a great brand for Donruss baseball, mm -hmm. and I believe even Gridiron Kings for football. Right. Um, yeah. And when Panini got the license for the NBA, they wanted to bring that into basketball. I said, "Hey, Court Kings, great, perfect." And then it didn't really work. You know, the, the first product was, was just okay. It, okay. Was, it was received all right. Had the box toppers, had some good things, but it didn't get the traction that Panini wanted. What, do, do you use the same artists year after year? Or no. The, art, the artists change? Uh, I mean, there's a design team at Panini. Okay. okay. That handles for the most, the, the majority of products. Got it. Um, and, you know, but some people, you know, come and go, depending. Uh, so the people who work so on Perez, this one. Perez. Yeah, yeah, no, that. not this one. Um, yeah. So, so I believe you know that the art direction was still uh, the same. Lead was working on the, the first Court Kings for this okay. one, okay. but the main designers, the ones who were doing most of the inserts, were, were different people. Got um, it. But overall, you know, we, we took a look at the brand. We liked the brand. It just didn't really get a good time to shine that first year. Yeah, um, it's got a lot of competition. You know, well, you yeah. guys have so many. I mean, there's brands. a lot of brands, and, and, and you know, there are a number of things like you know, timing in the calendar and value equation, everything else, we took a look at it and said, okay, let's really lean in to the artistry element as well as the whole Kings and royalty element. Love it. And so we, you know, revamped a lot of the, the product names, you know, we said, okay, there's Squires as one of the inserts, Masterpieces, Legacies, and, you know, we even, you know, we brought back the Italian, which, you know. Say it, say it. Oh, I thought you were going to say it. No, no, no. I, I will butcher it. Okay. I want to call it uh, Sir De La something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is, exactly. Is, really? No. Uh, it's, uh, uh, <laughs> like, like I said. Yeah, La Cinque oh. Pubelle. So there you go. La Cinque Pubelle? Uh, basically. Okay. Um, it, it Can you also pronounce Giannis' last name? I know it's Greek. Adetokounmpo. Yeah. Of course. Man, you and my wife. No, my wife can pronounce it. I can't. Uh, I just call him Giannis. Yeah, I've been doing that too. I mean, <laughs> you uh, just nailed it though. I did. I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm all right. I, I had to learn. I had to type it over and over again, <laughs> in, you know, for a year, well, for many years. Right. Um, but La Cinque Pubelle means the five most beautiful. Okay. So the original. And uh, one of the insert, most amazing inserts out there. It's fantastic. I mean, we loved the Kobe Bryant autographs and then everything else. Um, what are the print runs on those? Because they aren't. I can't tell you that. Yeah, you can. Just give me something. I can't tell you that. Under 10? I can't tell you that. Okay. okay. So for the 13, 14. He'll year, tell me after. It was numbered at 35 or less. Okay. okay. Because. Were uh, they actually numbered or was that just really. In this case, it was numbered. Okay. Okay. Because I believe actually this year it might have been all Kevin Durant based. Mm. Hence the 35. Ooh. But uh, so it was always numbered out of the player's jersey number. Okay. And so it was, I believe at the time. Is it always one time. player? No. Okay, okay. We changed it up a couple of years. We made it so that one year it was the top five draft picks. Okay. And so it varied. Ooh, I like that. Uh, one year we made it so that it was just about a certain player. And so it, it varied. <gasps> so special. We even actually made it one year. I think we made it out of 10, like 10 players. Instead of uh, the Cinque Cubelli, it was whatever 10 most beautiful is. And so they aren't they aren't like one per case. It's like one in. Just, these are, those are rare. Cases. Yeah, like yeah. super rare. Super rare, yeah, definitely. So you think we'll pull one? <laughs> I think we'll probably pull three. 
<laughs> now, if we pull three, there's definitely the fix. This is definitely a huge problem. <laughs> um, but we, we started looking at, like, you know, even with the rookies, the rookie scale on this, where it's, you know, you have the rookies one that you get pretty much in every set or mm -hmm. every box, but then you have the two, the three, and the four. Yeah. It, with, with varying different rarities. And four is the, the black and white in this year. The hardest to get. Hardest to get. Okay. And level honestly, four. I think this year, level four was out of 10. Um, mm. But some years we took the print run off where it wasn't ten actually it was even less than that. Um, but we just like man, yeah. the the Giannis, the black and white Giannis, beautiful. It is glorious. It is like art within art. Yeah, it makes me so happy. But yeah, I need one of those for the collection. Yes. All right, what do you think? Should we, should we do this? Okay, one more time. Um, oh, oh no, I'm gonna, no, I'm gonna do, do a recap. Okay. Okay, we're gonna do that because I really want to get in this box. I've had a hard time <laughs> not opening this. Um, okay, so tonight is uh, day five, the finale of Greek Freak Week, and I'm going to go through the boxes that we've gone through, so you guys can go back and watch the episodes if you want to, but Monday nights we did Crusade, Tuesday nights we did Prestige, Wednesday night we did Elite, which you said was another one of your babies. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Thursday we did, uh, or last night we did Pinnacle, we pulled two Giannis, um, including a, an artist proof, which was amazing. I freaked out. I, I totally geeked out during episodes. Nice. And then tonight is the court camps. Freak. Yeah, the geek. The geek freak. Yeah, the geek and the freak. The geek That's, and see, the if freak. I had to rename this, why didn't I say that? That's okay. That's all right. Oh, man. See, I thought Pack Geek and the Geek Freak was fun enough, but you're right. The you're fine. Geek Freak. The Geek Freak. Hey, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Let, let's see what we have. Do you want to do the honors? Sure. Since this is, uh, this is yours? Sure. 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 Let's see what right. happened. How long has it been since you've cracked a box of this? Talk me through this. I bought a box of Port Kings at the National two years ago. Okay. That's so, when I met you. Yes. The, the 2018 National. I met you and Mike. Yes. For the first time, I met Mike, uh, basketball Mike, right? Uh, no, but, um, there was baseball Mike back in the day. Baseball Mike, no, this was uh, uh, the Keith, there's Keith, Keith. David Porter. Thank you, Keith. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, that was the last time I've opened a box of court games. Really? Yeah. What this year was, did you open a, a new box? Like a Luca box? It was not a Luca box. Okay. It was was not a Ben Simmons box. It was a Towns. It was a Towns. It was a Towns box. Okay, nice. Yeah, okay. I don't I don't remember what I got out of it, but it was uh, that was the last time. All, All right. right, let's see what we've got. So let's start here. with the box topper. I'm really hoping this is not a. So some of these, um, the box toppers, there's one autograph per case. And I think it's a 12 box case. Does that sound right? It might have been more box? than that. I think it was a 16. 16 okay. Uh, and, and one thing that we did with this one was, and over the years, we wanted to make sure that we tried not to duplicate who was signing box toppers. Mm. So the, the, the roster this year would have been different from the year prior. Or the, and, and the How year we're looking. after. How are we looking? It's not an autograph. It's not an autograph. Okay, no. but is it a good player? I think he's a great player. Ooh, we got KG. Back when hey, the uh, back, is... back when KG was a Brooklyn Net. Remember that little era? Dude, I those jerseys are awesome. I, I would jerseys. so rock one of those jerseys. I got I got Brooklyn blood, so you know. That's, um, you do wait, wait yeah. what? You got Brooklyn family? Yeah, really? Yeah. Um. So Kevin Garnett is one of the players that I seem to pull in every box, really? which I'm totally, I'm, I'm hey. totally fine with that. There's That's certain right. players that I never get. I never get Steph Curry. I almost always get a KG. I seem to get an abnormal amount of uh, LeBrons, which is, is a blessing. That's a, I was going to say that's it. Uh, I'm sorry. Certainly not, compla I'm sorry. <laughs> certainly not complaining. Do you talk about <laughs> it or do you, do you <laughs> talk about first world problems? I mean, yeah. I get way too many LeBrons. I don't have room in my collection for all the LeBrons. Okay, let, I let's, get it. let's get down. So I, how many cards in here? Ten? I want to say this should be ten. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. So and it should be one autograph and one number card. So you didn't even need scissors for that. No. It's very impressive. Professional then. Okay, man. This All is right. here we go. Here we'll we keep, go, Corey. We're keeping on with Brooklyn to start. Darren Williams, North Texas' own. Hey, you know, see these uh, I'm looking at organization. This. Is that nice? I see this. This is fancy. Yeah, this is by Hits. They do the sports hobby mat. What's interesting, obviously, is, you know, since this is the 13-14, seeing how many players have changed teams because we got Chris mm, Paul. Oh, yeah, Chris Paul. Um, I like that. I'm going to just move this back a little uh -oh, bit. Uh -oh, uh -oh. Uh, we got Zach Randolph, the Grit and Grind era. Just business. look at the artwork on that, man. They're so cool. Yeah, and our team did a really, really great job um, just putting together 
the elements of this and making these really unique. Um, and we've got like how many graphic designers would touch? It depended on, on the product. Okay. So I mean, there's some where you don't, you would have a lead designer, and mm -hmm. then you'd have some people, uh, a bunch of player, a bunch of other uh, people on the team doing support. So Got they it. would do an insert, kind of with the same aesthetic, the same kind of ideas. Okay. Um, and so for the most part, you know, it'd be like anywhere from five to ten, depending. Oh on wow! That. Okay. Awesome. So then we've got. He might be okay. It's Kobe. Mr. Mr. Kobe. I'm going to sleeve that. I don't blame you for sleeving that. I've only got, okay, so I've got three sleeves left because I ran out. Um, we might, hopefully there's some more needs for this. Maybe, we'll see. All right, we've got right. the portrait. There's always one portrait. Oh, in I love the, the portrait. Too. It's And it's a little bit smaller than the rest of the cards, right? Yes. Okay. And I can't remember if it was this year or a year later, we made it so that when you got the lower numbered portraits uh there would be a canvas border as well Ooh, so let me see that back. yeah so that's a regular you know just the regular one but carlos boozer that is uh, this number at 149 yep okay and then we've got one of the rookies i believe this is rookies this might be rookies two so this oh, yeah, is yeah, level two. uh ucla legend shabazz muhammad all right. Playing in China these days. But is he? No, I, okay. He was last time I saw him. As long as he's still playing. Yeah, so it's Jabaz Muhammad. He counts as a rookie. <laughs> I can't, I want to look, but I'm not going to. Um, we've got Jeremy Lin. Yeah. Back when he was a rocket. <laughs> That's a Renaissance man, by the way. I'm going to close. I've got something opening up here. What's up, guys? By the way, I'm sorry I haven't been interacting. I've been having too much fun with Corey here, but I see we've got a lot, a lot of comments. Thanks yep. for hanging out, guys. Make sure to subscribe. Make sure to hit the like button. Thank you. Awesome. We've got Masterpiece D. Wade. Oh, nice. And that's numbered out of 175. Oh, man. Give you going to stay And here's the Leave it alone. Oh, wait, oh, wait. Oh, wait. Yeah, okay. we can make a decision after that. <laughs> I'm just, oh, I can't wait. We've got Paul Pierce. This is a very Brooklyn box, Dude, by the way. I love Paul Pierce. He's a KU guy. He is a KU guy. Yeah, I went to Kansas State. We I talked about did. this. Yeah. We talked about this last night. I'm still a KU. You wore different colors. Thing, but it's okay. You wore different <laughs> colors than he did. <laughs> so that's out of, out of 325. That's Gallery of Stars. Nice. Another, another. Out of 325. Heck yeah. And then, so we've got an on card autograph. Okay. <laughs> Dude, who is it? So really quick, we had a uh, uh, in Court Kings. We put in the next day autographs this year. Oh my gosh! In thirteen fourteen. So the the next day autographs traditionally with Panini, uh, these were signed at the rookie photo shoot. Okay. So the player would take the photograph as soon as they got into the building. Basically, Panini would work on it, and the cards would be there for them to sign the next. Day. Okay. So it's not just a clever name. Correct. It's, wow. That's so impressive. It was a full full court press for Panini to get this done. Um, and and so that they would get in, it was the first auto, first photo they would be taking generally with their professional auto, uh, professional uniforms. That's so cool. I thought for some reason those were outside the boxes. I didn't think they were. No. Did you speak, speak over okay. So we so we pulled a uh, an X day autograph. Okay. Um, and again, this was a very, uh, well collected set. Okay. And, um, I just want to tell you, it's the number one pick. Whoa, dude, that's huge. <laughs> it's Anthony oh Bennett. my gosh. I'll take it. Hey, I'll take it. he was the number one pick. I'm just excited to get in the next day. <laughs> oh, man. It's the next day autograph. It's Tony Bennett's son. It's Tony Bennett's son. He didn't leave his heart in San Francisco. <laughs> oh, my gosh, dude. I The way you were leading me on there, I thought for sure we had... <laughs> We had a chance. I think you built that up so it much. It would have been ever. such a great card that in November, been. December, no, January. No, I'm, I'm excited. This is my first next day auto. So that's, awesome. that's actually really cool. So is this numbered? Not numbered. It is not numbered. I can tell you that it is a short print. I can't tell you what the, what the uh, print run When you is. say short print. <laughs> dude, that's, that drives me crazy. Because like I 
so badly want to know the print run yeah. on Kabooms. Mm -hmm. And anytime uh, Tracy and I start mentioning Kabooms, like I try to ask him just like he's going to slip up and say, oh, it's out 35, mm -hmm. you know, but uh, of course he doesn't because you guys are, you know, you're, uh -huh. you're, you're holding these secrets and that's yes. okay. But, uh, but hey man, that was awesome. Hey, you, you know. So you did yeah. a good job on this product. Hey, you know what? If, if Like I said, if this had been, you know, so th this was one of my favorite uh, reviews of Court Kings was right as it came out, I saw somebody who had said, yeah, I went to my, uh, my local card shop and I bought a box. It didn't get good value, but I really, really liked it. And so I bought another box. And then I pulled a New Orleans Noel, which at the time, again, was a very, very good audience. Yeah. And, he's no Anthony Bennett. But. Oh, I mean, yeah, no, he's no Anthony Bennett. But who is? <laughs> who is? Ah, um, uh, dude. <laughs> Thank you, Corey. Of course. You, you are awesome, man. This is a blast. Okay, so you've got to promise me this. You will come yes. back on at some point in time, do a proper episode. Okay. No, no this live was still fun. Don't yeah. get me wrong. Oh, I love it. But we'll get you in a proper episode where we can get some cool editing behind it. We'll open up another box from your... Okay. What, what, what is your favorite year that you were from the team? Oh, my gosh. I mean... Like, I, would this be it? That's like saying, maybe? what's my favorite dog? I know. I know it's okay, but not all the dogs are in the room. So. Um, I would say the fifteen sixteen year. Okay, cool. Fifteen sixteen NBA was a great year. You got uh, that, that's Porzingis. That's yeah. uh, Devin Booker, my boy. My yeah, Devin yeah, yeah, Booker. yeah. Um, uh, that's is Carl that uh, Carl Anthony? Yeah, very cool. It's a great year. Uh, D'Angelo Russell. Yeah, that's, Zach, I think Zach Levine was that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, dude. Well, yeah. let's do some of that. Awesome. I would love to pull Devin Booker. I'm a new Devin Booker collector. Like, over this past season, yeah. he's been so fun, and I was so excited to see him just kill it in the bubble. Obviously, they make it the playoffs, but still, he's, like, what a great start to go into next season. Oh, my season. gosh. I mean, it's just it's they, so they great. They undefeated in the bubble. Like, pretty yeah. amazing. And, you know, what? We, speaking of the Brooklyn Nets, they really laid, laid out. Oh, no, it was the, the Bucks and the Nets, both of them. Need, we needed them to win uh, that last day to to have some help, but that's okay. Sorry, that's okay. That's okay. So I, I'm gonna yes. do a repeat of who won the jersey. So again, guys, I told you I would announce the uh, the winner of the jersey that we did the the Twitter giveaway. So it is at our trading cards. His screen name is sports card antagonist card economist Ben. Ben. Congratulations, you won the Giannis jersey, and I will mail that out to you. I will also DM you on Twitter uh, to get your info. And hey, dude, this is so fun. I'm going to shake your hand again because awesome. I, I haven't been able to shake many hands lately. I, so. You know what I get? Right. We were both tested before this. You so. sanitized? Yeah, totally, totally. Uh, my, my, my mask is here. So, <laughs> All right, guys, thank you for tuning in. This has been fun. This is the last night of Greek Freak Week, or as we call it, Geek, Geek Freak, Freak Week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. We'll see you next time, guys. Thank you. And let's end this thing.